So if you're like me, you probably have a lot of computers you test. Got my box computer here, my box computer there, my Kali computer. Of course, I've got to have my laptop so I can look up how to solve problems on the internet. And with all of this, I just don't have space for keyboard and mouse. You see, the cat takes the space. So what I really like to do is get rid of my monitor and my keyboard and my mouse. So I can have more space for Sherlock the cat or Daniel the cat. He's Daniel. Or a whole nother computer, I guess. Yeah, or a whole nother cat if they got along. So anyway, wouldn't it be great if I could use my laptop here that's already on my desk for testing computers as the monitor and the keyboard and the mouse, a KVM on a laptop. So this is the PiCast KVM, and it solves that exact problem. On one side, we have an HDMI in and a USB emulation that we connect to our target computer. There's also an HDMI out from the Pi Compute module, and you can enable HDMI pass-through in software if you want to. On the host side, we have a Type-C labeled USB 3 Ethernet, and this is connected back-to-back -to, -back to the Ethernet adapter on the internal Raspberry Pi. This lets us view the Pi KVM directly from our laptop with just a USB Type-C cable and nothing else. You can power the PiCast from this port, but if your computer can't supply enough power, there's also a second Type-C where you can supply additional power. It also has a handy little display on the side. It will show you the link local IP address as well as the host name. You can just connect to it with the host name .local using MDNS. There's also a micro HDMI for the second HDMI port if you happen to need that for some reason. In full disclosure, PiCast did send me this prototype as well as a box of accessories and cables to try out different hat options. No money changed hands and they'll see this review the same time you do. So just as a quick demo, we need to connect our Type-C to our target and our HDMI to our target. So I have a short HDMI cable here, as well as a very short Type-C to Type-A cable. Plug that into the target, get in there. HDMI into the target. So I've got a cable connected to my laptop. I'm gonna go in there. So now that's all up, pykvm.local. Admin, admin, don't save, and we can click KVM. So now we're connected to the HDMI and the USB on my Kali Linux box. Pretty cool, right? So let's take a look at what's inside this guy. Okay, so now we can slide the case off and we see what we've got in here. So in the PiCast, we have the baseboard here. The schematics for this baseboard are available. So these route signals to a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, which is under this heatsink with a little fan. It's got a full set of GPIO pins, as well as a number of other connectors that are used for some of the other hats. It's got the little tiny screen. On the bottom side, we can see a couple other things. This is a micro SD card slot. Don't remember what these connectors go, but they're used for something. And the dip switches, which are used to configure some of the routing of signals. So like you can configure ethernet to go to one of these external connectors instead of to the USB 3 ethernet, if you want to use a PoE or ethernet breakout. So since this is based on the Pi Compute Module 4, this is running the open source Pi KVM software which is used on a number of these open source KVM projects, and we inherit all the features of that project as well. Overall impressions, this guy has an all metal case, nothing rattling around inside, everything is well secured. I would feel comfortable putting this in my backpack and leaving it there for a long time. So in case you've never used the PyKVM open source project before, I'm gonna go through some of the features of PyKVM because that's of course included with the PyCast. So I've mentioned before that the PyKVM and the PyCast support USB emulation. And this is done through the Raspberry Pi Compute Module's USB gadget driver. So the gadget driver can emulate essentially a number of USB devices all plugged into a hub on a USB 2 port. The USB 2 is a limitation of the Pi Compute Module's hardware. So we're stuck at 480 megabits a second, which is probably fine. The PiCast of course passes it out the USB Type-C. But what can we emulate with this gadget driver? Well, normally we can do a keyboard and a mouse, which is perfectly fine. We can also do a USB CD-ROM or a USB flash drive. Let's see how that looks. 
So if you normally image computers with something like Ventoy on a flash drive, now you can get rid of your monitor and your keyboard and your mouse with a PiCast. You can also get rid of the Ventoy drive because the micro SD card of the Pi can be used to store those images. You can choose what images you want to present to the device in Pi KVM. You're good to go. Now this device I have has a 32 gig SD card. I'm not sure how big of SD cards they're shipping with their units. The one I got had a 32 gig card. You can of course go bigger. I've got the old construction equipment board here. It's some old AMD pile driver, bulldozer, whatever. So now I'm getting ready to boot the system up. I'm gonna pick an ISO. I chose Alpine Linux because it's a tiny ISO and I don't wanna wait for it to download. So we can go here and click Alpine Extended. We can choose if we wanna make it a flash drive or a CD-ROM drive, and if we wanna make it writable. So I'm gonna choose flash drive, not writable. So once we're all ready here, we click connect drive to server. It'll turn green and then it's ready to go. And then I'm gonna power on the system, which needs a little metal screwdriver here. So we just go and we go click. Nope, nope, those two. Sorry, the bulldozer is so loud. So I'm not sure if this system needs me to press F2 or F12 or delete or what. So I got the virtual keyboard up. We're just gonna try clicking buttons. There we go, Alpine's coming up. I unplugged the boot drive because I couldn't figure out what hotkey made this motherboard go into the BIOS. Somehow I ended up in uh, BIOS flashing mode in accident. Alpine is of course booted. It's a very minimal operating system. So another neat trick of PyKVM is I can paste a block of text and it'll type it out for me. So in this case, I want to add a repository to Alpine. So I can paste my text in here and go. And it typed it out. So I gave the Alpine system a repository, an IP address, and a DNS server. So now we can install things and we can run NeoFetch. Other features of PyKVM include the ability to send shortcuts. If you want to press Control Alt Delete or things like that, you can do it here. If you're a Linux user, there are special combinations of the magic sysrec key and it can send different variants of it here. And if you do something cool, it can take a screenshot. Or, more likely, if you get a kernel panic, you can take a screenshot. Boop! Look at that! My screenshot. Pretty cool, eh? So at this point you're probably thinking, wow, that guy's pretty neat and useful. But, one more thing. PyCast actually sent me two of them. And this one doesn't quite look like that one, does it? In fact, they have an ecosystem of six different combinations of add-on boards and cases you can get for just the right KVM for your application. So the one I've been taking a look at so far is the base board. This has all of the base functionality, USB 3 to Ethernet, and basic KVM stuff. And they also sent me one other version. This is the dual ATX version. So if you want to put this in a rack, monitor your tiny little cluster, you can hook up two HDMI inputs two USB emulators, and two sets of ATX power control. You also get Ethernet with PoE in. You get the same LCD you've already had. A couple other features. So now let's see what this guy can do. So the ATX breakout board just fits in a standard ATX case. Included a half height and a full height bracket. RJ45 to connect to the PiCast. And these eight pins for a pin header here for your standard ATX hard drive LED, power LED, reset button and power button. Now there's two sets of pins here, two columns, and these are just connected together. So you can connect one set to your existing front panel I.O. And your second set you can use the jumper cables to connect to your motherboard. I have a cardboard case here, so it doesn't have any power buttons. So I'll just hook these guys up. So I hooked up the ATX control to this guy. He's PC1, he's got USB, HDMI, and power control. I've got HDMI only on my Mega Lab. Don't want to mess with the power there because I've got stuff running, experiments. So this particular version comes with PoE power. So I plugged it into Ethernet, showed up, did MDNS. So currently I'm on the input one, so it shows the power LED is good because I hooked up the power LED. Go to KVM switch here and click. And boom, there we go, it's my Proxmox system. If you like clicking buttons, there's a button on top too. Click. You can also do power control too. So over here at the ATX, I can say long, short, reset. So let's do a 
reset on this server. There it goes, now it's going to reboot. It also works to turn it on too. Click power, here it goes. So thanks for coming along with me in this tour of the PiCast KVM. It's currently available for sale at Crowd Supply. It did reach its funding goals, so it's not like a campaign anymore. They have six models for sale. So the two units I looked at today are the Pi KVM base unit, that's the smaller one, and also the dual ATX, which also has a built-in HDMI switch. Those are the two that I looked at. In addition to that, they have four other units. So there's one unit that's single ATX, so that just adds on an ATX hat to the base unit. They have an additional hat that adds on an M.2 carrier for an LTE modem. There's also a hole in the case to fit the LTE modem if you like to have this remotely accessible. And then you can combine that LTE modem M.2 carrier board with either the single or the dual ATX to make a really tall stack. All of the pre-assembled versions include a Compute Module 4. There's images available on the website for the SD card if you need to reflash it or if you want to use them yourself. In the video, I mentioned that I'm using MDNS to connect to PyKVM.local. During testing, I actually found this did not work, and this was something I was expecting. So I reached out to the guys, they fixed it. I went to the website, downloaded the latest version of the image, and already includes that patch. So my feedback was incorporated. So if you do want to buy a PyCast, feel free to link down below. Not an affiliate link or anything, I don't get any commissions for that. I do get commissions if you go down to my Kofi down below and tip me. I greatly appreciate that one. Um, if you want to chat with me, I have a Discord server, link down below for that as well. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next adventure.